NAVE expects clear and concise decisions from its junior leaders under sometimes difficult circumstances, as well as a team player who works well with his or her peers and subordinates. Cadets coming to the Defence Academy should aim to complete a degree and to make the most of their leadership studies. They have been selected to come to the Academy because they have the potential to be the future leaders of the Air Force. The Army expects you to be able to lead a group of 30 men or women as soon as you are commissioned and march into an operational unit. That process begins the day that you march into the Defence Academy. The Australian Defence Force Academy, located in Canberra, is the premier teaching establishment for the three services. Opened in 1986, it performs a dual role of officer training and tertiary education in partnership with the University of New South Wales. For officer cadets and midshipmen attending the academy, Managing a complex mixture of academic study, military training, sport and social interaction is all in a day's work while they're learning to lead. In January each year, the Academy accepts its new intake of male and female recruits from the Navy, Army and Air Force. They arrive in Canberra from all over Australia, mostly straight from school or college. They have their eyes set on a university education and a leadership role in the Defence Force. I wanted a degree and I wanted this type of career where I was working with people, dealing with people and, um, and the leadership aspect of the whole thing. It's a career in which you can try your hardest and um, acquire so many talents. You're in charge of people you're learning management skills, you're doing something you really want to do. I wanted to join the forces, I thought if I go to cadets I'll get a feel of what it's sort of like and my uh, view of uh, being an officer changed as my responsibilities grew as a cadet and I decided to become an officer and I thought well I want a degree, I want to be an officer, go to the academy. The arrival at the academy ends months of interviews and selection boards and marks the transition from civilian to military life. Few, however, grasp the significance of the career they have chosen or have any idea of what lies ahead. Over the next few weeks they will undergo a metamorphic change from a disorganised mass of individuals into a disciplined and confident group of officer cadets. Some, however, will not make it. Move off now. Day one, um, we walked in, finally arrived with uh, a couple of other states, and that was sort of like, um, there was absolute silence in the courtyard, and we were told to put our bags in a certain area and just stand there. Didn't know anybody, I couldn't find any of my Tasmanian friends. And all you could see were like rows of um, these people, I suppose they were third years, marching along, swinging their arms as they walked past in absolute silence, and I was so scared. <laughs> New arrivals are assigned to an accommodation block called a division. Here, along with other recruits, they are instructed in the basics of military life. This is the role of the senior third year class. I oh, arrived here late and um, felt very awkward getting taught how to stand fast and march around the place and address people as under officer, a term I'd never heard before. And um, getting instructed by someone only a few years older than myself and treating them with so much respect. Um, it wasn't something I was used to. Uh, the first morning I woke up with someone pounding on my door at 6am screaming, Miss Young, get out of bed. And I just thought, my first thought was, oh my God, what am I doing? It was a huge culture shock. It's the biggest culture shock I've had in my life. But compared to my life at home, it's just unbelievably different. You can't describe it. Everything is different. Before any of these recruits can think about studying for a university degree, they must first undergo a six-week intensive training period designed to equip them for life in the Defence Force. This begins with Orientation Week. Thank you.
cooperate to graduate and you won't get through here as an individual. Uh, by the end of O week everyone was looking out for each other. Weapon fires, weapon stops. Tilt, cock, lock, look in. Rounds to the magazine, no rounds to the chamber, first time has happened. With orientation complete, the recruits leave the academy to spend time in the bush for their introduction to common military training. CNT, common military training, is when all the three services, Army, Navy and Air Force, we all go out to Madura, or well, the whole first year class goes out to Madura, which is arranged just about 15 minutes from ADVA. And what we do there, we um, learn like how to handle the rifle, the stire, how to clean it, how to shoot it. You actually get to go out in the shooting range and shoot it. Red water, minimal strikes, make your hand. Physical training plays a vital part of life at the academy. All recruits undergo dry and wet PT tests in the first few weeks to establish their level of personal fitness. The hardest bit was the back scale, because you've got to go back underwater like that, but just lose your breath, come up, and that's it. It wasn't that hard. As recruits come to the end of their common military training, it's time for them to focus on the academic side of life at the academy. I think it was, uh, it was done very well. We were given a good insight into uh, each of the courses and it helped us make our decisions. I ended up taking uh, information systems, economics, politics, maths, GS and physics GS and I'll be majoring in uh, economics management and information systems hopefully. The market day is run by University College, part of the University of New South Wales. Its role at the academy is to provide undergraduate courses leading to degrees in arts, science and engineering. Yeah I've always wanted to do civil engineering so I didn't really have a problem there. I'm going to be a facilities officer which is civil engineering that I'm doing and that's just on a base with your own little group of people and you look after all the facilities and stuff. You hear a lot about oh, I don't do engineering it's too hard so I just forgot about that because most people say it are arts and science people. Take one of those. Thank you. Uh, gives you more information on the English one and what you will get. Students quickly realise that unlike school the onus is on them to organise their own study program and be fully prepared for the commencement of studies in three weeks' time. Because I went to school here in Canberra, we have college in Year 11, 12, and it's somewhat closer to university than, than basically a lot of the other states have had. So we're, we're into taking our own notes and worrying about, worrying about ourselves and whether we've got everything up to standard and stuff. Over the next two weeks, recruits spend time training with their own service. For midshipmen, this means discovering Navy at HMAS Creswell. The best thing about Creswell was seeing Navy people do Navy things. We saw Navy drill, we saw Navy customs, we saw the Navy way of life for the first time. And it made us, even as first years, for the first time seeing Navy things, it made us feel proud to be walking around Creswell going, we're Navy people. It was unreal. Sea survival. We're in the orange suit and the life jacket on, you hit the freezing cold water, got into the raft, absolutely soaking wet water around my feet, freezing cold, and I thought, well, we're not going to get picked up to around 10, so we've got to last for six hours. Everyone got together, put in, got warm, and it was good after that. Yeah, I'll put some brown 
For army recruits, single service training is spent at Majura, learning the finer arts of weapon handling and bushcraft. Army in the bush is excellent, it's fantastic. We spent a week out in the scrub at Majura range living on ration packs. We did a lot of firing of our weapons on the range and also using um, blanks in the field. The staff on SST were fantastic, the sergeants, corporals, warrant officers, they were all really good, all helpful, funny, friendly. Like they treated us as, as adults, you know, they gave us initiative to get things done by ourselves. I think really experiencing what you're going to be doing as your job or vocation, that's what it's called when we're on SST. I was infantry through through, but yeah, I don't know now. I think didn't realise there weren't so many options in the army, so many different sorts of jobs you can do. Air Force recruits are motivated towards their chosen careers by visiting the operational squadrons around Australia. I originally wanted to fly as a pilot and um, I went for pilot testing, I didn't quite get in and I chose Air Defence Officer as my second preference. So being out on single service training in the RAF, that just confirmed that that's my career after the academy and that's what I really want to do. So, um, the RAF as a service is quite different than the academy, but you just adjust to it. And it was really good just to meet all the RAF people and that. But we got to basically do tours then and saw what the RAF was like. Went to the squadrons, we got to have a look around everything, which is good. The end of the six week military training period for recruits is marked by the Chief of the Defence Force Parade. CDF Parade was fantastic and put so much effort into our uniforms and when we walked out there and we were with the whole corps we just I just felt this um, sense of unity and, and belonging to this group of people who were so um, professional. I'd only done six weeks but there's a lot lot done in that six weeks and I just felt very proud of what I'd done. CDF itself was probably the best moment of my life. My parents and my brother came up and uh, I was so proud because I thought they're going to be up there seeing me marching and it meant that I was in the Corps of Officer Cadets and I'd made it through six weeks, I was even more happy. With the initial phase of military training behind them, first year students now face the new challenge of academic study at university. We'd only been over into Acker land about two or three times and so we didn't know where we were going and everything was strange. Plus the fact that I don't think it fully occurred to me what I was taking on as in the normal civilian uni and the military as well. I'm very fortunate in that my degree actually will um, be of use to me in my naval career. Um, a lot of people's won't be. Um, they stress to us that it's not vocational training as such but as a supply officer I'll definitely be able to use my economics management degree. New students soon discover the ample resources available for assignments. They have 24-hour computer access in the accommodation blocks and academic areas, and a comprehensive on-campus library. Um, basically, our students, we have a few uh, spare periods during the day. So during that time we'll go down to the library or catch up on a bit of reading. At the moment we haven't been given that much work, so um, study is just basically reading or just uh, catching up with a few things. So, but we haven't really got into the uh, study heavy duty yet. Campus life is a busy round of lectures, tutorials and workshops, with students needing to organise their time to fit everything in. At the moment I'm doing chemistry, which I love and because it's a self-paced course we have all the tutors coming together and they help you but most of the time you spend actually doing the tests and I'm up by about two weeks on my modules but I'm looking to finish mine around halfway through the second session hopefully and concentrate on my other subjects. Sport is an essential ingredient at the academy. Teams from a wide variety of codes take part in local competitions and between the six squadrons that make up the corps. 
There's a lot of rivalry between the squadrons because each squadron can sort of their squadron. It's a good atmosphere when you get out there with the tug of war. Everyone's got their war cries. So squadron rivalry, it's good because it um, brings all the three divs or four divs in the uh, squadron together and like everyone's all pally and everything. It's really good. The Academy has its own indoor sports centre with a comprehensive weights room and a 25 metre pool. Have sport is, is really good. It's um, something to relax yourself after a hard day like of um, academics. You get up in the morning, you do a lot of work, you know, you rush from the start. Once you get to water polo training, you know, um, it's a little bit of fun. You, you still work hard and train, but um, a lot of the exhaustion from the day wears off. Not all study is carried on at the academy. This group of students is taking part in a current sampling experiment as part of an oceanography field trip at Jarvis Bay. I'm doing a maths major and oceanography sub-major and on a field trip. It's a lot more practical because oceanography is mainly made of me, so it's definitely relevant to what they're doing. I think it, it's, it's just going to help me maybe broaden my, my mind a little bit and, and actually be able to, be able to discuss, discuss things and, and understand concepts that possibly I wouldn't have understood if I hadn't have been doing it. I'm doing a Bachelor of Science, majoring in Computing Science and Physics. I'm also taking Maths and History. The lectures, you sit there and take notes. Any problems you have, you take to the um, tutor group. There are about to ten people in your tutor group, so it's very personal. And in the labs, you just do the practical side of uh, your degree. In spite of the many demands placed upon them, students still find time for creative outlets. The Academy has its own band, made up of officer cadets and led by the bandmaster. They also take part in debating, raising money for charities, and each September stage the Academy musical production. Now, I'm a puppet. That is myself and the band toad. It was fan toad of the opera this year, which is almost a take-off of every professional musical ever done and it was a good learning experience for me. I co-produced it and sort of got thrown in at the deep end really, being a first year. But it all came off in the end and everybody had a great time. Everyone was so enthusiastic towards it because it broke down the class barrier between first years, second years and third years because we're all working together. For students studying engineering, many demands are placed upon them in first year. So they must quickly learn to organise their study time to fit everything in. Uh, it's, it's fairly hard. It takes the most time of all the degrees and you don't have any spare time like artists and scientists. But on the other hand, you're doing something that I see is worthwhile. So it, it pays off. There's a lot of engineers as well to help you can ask your second years, who did it last year, for any help that you need. And that's one of the good things about coming here is you've got so much close contact to everyone else that um, you can get any help you need. Um, it's quite hard for engineers, not just academically, it's like time management wise as well. You don't get a lot of extra time during the day and a lot of your evening is taken up with study. But um, if you can plan your time and um, and you've pretty much got a good base from year 11 and 12, you should be fine. Students attend many social functions. These help them to acquire the social graces which will be expected of them as future officers of the Defence Force. It's good sharing the customs and traditions of the different services, just talking to, with each other and what their experiences were on the single service training and how they enjoy the Navy or the Army and just comparing it to my service. You're with people who are interested in the same things that you are. You're all basically the same age and you meet so many interesting people from all over Australia, second years and third years, and go out on the weekend, have dining ins and dining outs and squadron functions and div functions and sport functions and it's ex excellent fun. With the academic year behind them, the Corps of Officer Cadets prepares for the graduation parade. At the parade, third-year students graduate and pass on to their individual services. 
For the first years, it's time to reflect on what helped them to get through the year. Okay, you've got a few threads which come out of the jacket when you wash it. We've come through a whole year with our third years, um, not as friends but as a good working relationship and um, a lot of the third years you end up respecting a lot. So for us it's quite important to see our third years leave the academy and, um, and just remind us that in two more years we'll also be doing the same thing. The year has gone uh, very well, very successfully. Uh, transformed from a civilian into a midshipman. Academics, uh, I'm fairly surprised. I did very well. I got a uh, credit average. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, which is your service career, and you just got to stick through it. Um, also, a lot of hard work you got to put in. The only way you're going to know is if you come. Nothing anybody says is going to help you here you basically got to find it all out for yourself. If you're motivated towards a career to being an officer in the military, I think ADFA's definitely the place to come. Although the first year at the Defence Academy is tough and demanding, the rewards are great for those who make it through. The satisfaction of personal achievement, a comradeship second to none, and one year nearer to completing a university degree. All achieved while learning to lead.